Namaskar. Good evening and a warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us today for In Silence, The Secrets Speak, a narrative performance by Seema Kohli. It is thanks to the National Gallery of Modern Art, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, that this presentation is possible. I would like to invite Mr. Darshan Kumar, Jao, Deputy Curator, to speak a few words. Uh, firstly, I would uh, like to welcome you all once again. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you all, a uh, beautiful crowd, wonderful evening. And uh, it's a great pleasure to have Seema performing here at NGMA Bengaluru in the Mirror Pool for the third time here. I welcome her and, t and her team. At this moment, uh, I would uh, like to quote, they told me go out and meet new and different people called strangers. But I asked, where do I meet them? They shrugged, so I gave them a mirror. So this is about the reflection. It's an apt time to say these words. Uh, so again, I welcome you all. And uh, at this moment, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Gallery Veda for supporting this. I would uh, also like to thank our uh, dear colleagues uh, for putting all the efforts in setting up this uh, performance, what we are looking forward for. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again, and welcome you all. The seed of this narrative performance goes back to the period of inspiration and insight when Seema Kohli worked on a large-scale painting for Park Hyatt Hotel in Chennai in 2016, brought together by Gallery Veda. The imagery in the painting organically transcended into verbal form through narration and poetry. At the core of the performance is the symbolism of constant creation and evolution represented by the act of weaving cloth, the warp and weft becoming the fiber of life. The working of the loom, a rhythm of the universe, showcased here in this woven art piece, made to the design at mills of Sitapur, Uttar Pradesh, by Mohammed Salim, facilitated by the Raj Art Initiative. This is a piece in which Hope synchronizes the material clocks back to its humanistic origins, where the product, processes, and people all emerge as players in the design matrix of endless possibility. The theme of the piece brings together influences of ancient and modern Indian tradition and the artist's own spiritual quest in the expressions of her art. This performance has been supported by Gallery Veda. I would like to now call upon Ms. Preeti Garg to speak a few words. Good evening, everyone. It's actually a pleasure showcasing this in uh, Bangalore, and that too, the most prestigious NGMA. Thank you all for coming and making it as successful as it, it seems to be. This concept actually started in Chennai when we were commissioning a work for the Hotel, hotel Park Hyatt Chennai. And it developed into such a beautiful performance that it was so close to my heart that I felt that it should be taken to different places. And I'm very happy that now it is in Bangalore, but hopefully it will be traveling the world. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Accompanying her in this performance by the mirror pole is Lokesh Bharadwaj, acclaimed Bharatnatyam dancer and recipient of the prestigious Charles Wallace Sp Scholarship. In Silence, the Secret Speaks is the poetic narration of eternal existence, expressed in three superfluous motives of the poet who is the narrator, who is Seema, the artist, and hence the creator 
who lays down the bricks to the mystical ways of the real and surreal. The weaver who spins the eternal loom of life, the cloth which we embody as first robe until the shroud. And the dancer, the spirit that moves within us, balancing on the beam of creation vis-a-vis -vis destruction. The universe created by Seema in the confluence of these three forms in synergy with each other through thought, expression and universal tangled engagement is an exhilarating experience to witness. The golden womb with its umbilical cord, the lotus stems, its creation in muddied waters resulting in a flowering of the world and a state of enlightenment where unearthly beings are manifested and experience the joy of creation, of emergence from the depths of the Hiranya Garbha Koham or the golden womb. Seema invites you into her garden of earthly delights the artist's series of narrations touch upon striking symbolism as the many manifestations of her universe emerge from the depths of this fertile mythical womb and she embarks on her journey that recognizes the cosmic essence within the worldly. A conversation within, a conversation without, touching the hearth with the tip of my toe, I, I connect with you from my heart to your soul. Good evening. I'm very glad to be here today as Bangalore has always been so welcoming, I must say, and especially NGMA Bangalore has always, I wanted to continue with my poetry, but I just want to let it be, let my heart flow, and I had to stop at this, and I had to say this. Everyone is familiar with my work here, I hope, uh, as a painter, my dimension and my thought is nine. But that line sometimes take the form of another medium, another dimension, which is sometimes a sculpture, sometimes an installation. On also sculptures, they become varied. Sometimes it is steel, sometimes fiberglass, and also sometimes glass. Right. So I have never stopped myself from flowing. This is not a shift. This is a flow. As an artist, I feel like an, I must say, as air, trying to get into any possible space I get, trying to be that, maybe this tree, maybe this water, whatever you see, I may not be able to interpret it just the way probably you would like it to be, but for me, it is an extension of myself. And as I keep extending, I keep extending myself. I don't stop. I don't stop thinking, oh my God, this is a word. I, I may be termed as a poet. I'm not a poet. This is broken prose. It is grammatically uh, the most bizarre kind of writing, but it is from the heart. It is what my canvas talked to me. It is what my line talked to me. And I share it with you. I share it with you after, I think, going through it a hundred times and thinking, yeah, I think I'm ready. My words told me they were ready. And that's why they wanted to come up to you. 
So I don't want to stop here. I would like to start again. Thank you for being and listening to me. With the reds of the mornings, blacks of the night, yearnings of the past and the freshness, and the freshness of present, all caught up in an amalgamation of five elements, under the spell of Maya, engulfing, floundering, celebrating it, enchanting me, seducing me, into her world of magic, a world of dreams, and like an enchantress, holding my hand, walking me through this inexplicable experience, influencing me to open my thoughts to greater heights, stringing me into watching the flight of limitless dreams into the discipline of happening, making my path my destination. Do I want to walk safely on a zebra crossing? Isn't fear only a line in my head? I'll cross it there. The world which we inhabit, we dwell upon, is not a dream but a reality, a universe that was neither male nor female. But as it took a form, it led to the birth of Maya or illusion, that which we believe, that which we make tangible, but that which is not. Prakriti then, nature, nurturing, hence feminine, creation, procreation, a feminine percept, a constant state of evolution, of birth and rebirth, of creation and destruction and creation again. I, I celebrate that aspect of creation, of nurturing, of faith, of belief. The golden womb with its umbilical cord, the lotus stems, its creation in muddied waters resulting in the flowering of the world and a state of enlightenment. A chain that carries on regardless of worlds that come and go. But my, my universe is complete only when all energies balance. Yin and Yang, positive and negative, man and woman, the Ardhanareshwar, not some hybrid creature, but man and woman united as symbols that complete that circle and that cycle of life. Conditioned, of course, by roles, not, not one without the other. A complete circle of harmony aligned with nature. Nature itself, nature, nurturer. I put the woman at the center of the universe, I put the man at the center of the universe. It was this completion of the cosmos that fascinated me. Why? Why should one be without the other? This is a question which has almost always fascinated me. Why is this struggle of gender? I have not understood. I haven't understood the struggle of gender because each each one has their own existence, their own space. And I change with time, with each course, I look different. I'm not this, neither that, neither good nor evil, neither fear or fearless. Each of you I aspire to be in that too, the one the one which you may detest. I'm neither an angel nor a devil, god or a goddess. I, I pervade everything, reside everywhere as consciousness. Consciousness delves in everything, everywhere. Everything is throbbing with life, rhythm, dance, movement. 
energy creating love, life, death, recursing in a cycle again. I am everywhere in everything and also anything. It is. It is a borrowed breath of this earth, water and air. Of he, she and me. There is only one truth that is breath. There is only one faith that is love. There is only one belief. I am you and you are me. You all are me. I cannot deny it. You cannot deny it. We belong to the part, to one same consciousness. We share the same womb. We belong to the same space. It is this crossover. It is this crossover from real to the unreal and to the sunreal from the physical to the metaphysical that inspires me, that really inspires me. As, as Rumi's spe secrets speak, there is a thread of life from the heart to the lips where the secret of life is woven. Words tear the thread, but in silence, in silence, the secrets speak. But what are these secrets? What are these secrets of Maya? He opened his eyes, she smiled and said, everything is me and mine. He closed his eyes and united. Everything merged within. She expanded and contracted at her own accord. With each and every breath he took. Birthing the skies with earth and waters, opening up the womb with many universes, creating craters in infinity, roaring and thundering laughter with the slashing of oceans, overlapping seas, extensive movement in untiring volcanoes flowing listlessly, but with a purpose. You are, you are in a kinetic motion, self-propelled, my reverence, my reverence to you, my Kali, my woman. My woman is that Maya, she's composite, whole, complete. She's also a sum, a part, incomplete, great but not greater than the universe. She is a creature of myths, metaphors and autobiographies. Part real, part mythical, part mortal, part immortal, part temporal, part celestial, so is nature. As are men and women, I, I, I this world, I pay it a homage, I paint a story, I am a tree. I, I become a tree. I hold the universe in the spread of my arms to the rhythm and the dance of the flapping wings, to the swing and the sway of the viridian leaves, in the unleashed laughter of the roaring thunder, in the quietness of the soft drizzle. I sense you. I sense you taking me closer to you. Words and thoughts can be encapsulated in books, but the realm of desires and dreams is beyond the realm of intellect, beyond explanations, into the realm of experience. Experience, I think, is one of the most debated words, whether we should take an experience from an experience of another person, or we should have an experience which is our own, physical, spiritual, metaphysical, any kind. I believe experience is what you 
experience yourself. Rest all is a theft. Experience and celebrate for all those women who have a voice and who do not have one, for they understood the silence. Celebrate for all those women who walk the untrodden path, true or false, moral or immoral, good or bad, for what is for one is not for another. Celebrate for those women exploring, unearthing, in the rhythm to the smile and the laughter of their souls. Celebrate to being a woman not only in body, but in soul. It is only when we understand Maya and her kale that we aspire for the union of the inner force with that of the outer, which we call the universal truth or Parabrahma. Whenever I look around at the plants in the pots of my balcony, the trees in the gardens, or the forests and the birds in the sky, they're still chirping around here. The bees and the birds in the sky soaring high. The table I work on, the paints in the jars with which I paint, the sink in which I wash my dishes, the clothes, the clothes that I wear, it may be my body, even the food, that I eat, the apple, the apple that I bite, and of course, my, my dear pet Fido, he taught so much about love. My relatives, my loved ones, the mosquitoes that I squash as a reflex action, when it descends upon me, each one has its own journey, defined by its own actions, thus marking its own unique cycle of rejuvenation. For I firmly believe there is no such thing as death, only a cycle of creation and destruction, birth and rebirth, dominated by, as I believe, energies, the three basic energies which may be called Triguna, the three streams, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. An invocation of these energies that are responsible for the creation, destruction and creation, yet again spiraling around me, encapsulating me, mysticizing me, mystifying you. Am I, am I a myth or a reality? Today's reality is tomorrow's myth. Yesterday's myth is tomorrow's reality. I weave a web of illusion. I entice great desires. Am I, am I terrible? A destroyer, a slayer of all that entangles into my web? licking the roots of their desires, vanquishing it, bestowing freedom to all who dare, who dare to play with me. I, I am Maya. The fire within is without. I am the creator and the destroyer. Come, play with me. Come, Play with me. Isn't it all in our mind, all this game, all this play, all this existence, all this living, creation, destruction, everything? Isn't it all in our mind? Mind, mind which is just a space, one thought born, one thought dead, like forms, births, relationships, rising like a bubble gum in my mouth and ending it right there, convictions. Convictions which are trained by time, swallowing them 
vanquishing them, licking them, erasing them. Maya, Maya is laughing. She's laughing, giving it yet another chance to play with her, enjoying this whole parody of blood, life, birth, death, and life again. And there is a lot of talk about liberation. Isn't it? We all want to be liberated at some time from our works, from our existence, from our life, whatever we may call. Do I want to be liberated? Do I want to continue with this scale, with this play? Do I want to play? My kale is my mind. My mind is my flight. My flight is beyond a zillion, zillion skies, sun, moons, and stars. I ride the waves of wind and water. I dive, I dive deep beneath the earth, finding the world of earth and skies. No different, no different from the world above or from the world within. Is there a difference? We all belong to that complete whole. We cannot, we cannot break it. We all. I believe that to explain the manis manifestation from one to many of forms, names, and a calendar of time, within which each was created can be attributed to an evocation of these energies. It is my personal belief that when the, from the mythological form of Ardhanareshwar, the, when Parvati disengaged from Shiva, Shakti gained form and started manifesting as many or what we call this world. From Shakti, arose the Saptamatrikas, Ashtalakshmis, Navadurgas, Dashmahavidyas, multiplying further into Chaucer Yogini, Ikyasi Yogini, and constantly multiplying. We cannot, uh, you know, it can outnumber our numbers all the time. For forms that continue to evolve, to satisfy our need, desires, or to bring balance to the world, this, of course, is very much my personal belief. Not something you will find in a book or rendered as a philosophy researching somewhere in a library, but it just appeals to me just as much as the many versions of Shakti that exists. I share in those versions and I'm fascinated by their interpretations and manifestations too. As Virginia Woolf writes, for we think back through our mothers, if we are women. Manifestations inspire me to attempt to analyze the world I see around me, especially as a woman who must make sense daily of injustices in the world, to comprehend why we continue to look away when prejudice occurs, when sensitivities are overlooked, or when negative forces are invoked. I therefore, I therefore look inwards to evoke the energies that is manifest in each one of us to apply the healing salve of motherhood to a world that needs it for that energy resides in each one of us, women and men, crossing all genders. And it is that, it is that I think we must manifest. I look within the womb to discover that which is outside. I want to awaken my senses to experience the goddess's gift of what nature bestows on us. Not just of life, but of the sun, 
that shines and rain that rejuvenates, of the heat and the cold, and all things that bring to life that which is around us. I believe in that energy. I think it is a journey, a parikrama, a cyclic journey. Saptamatrikas, the mysterious energies, who they say is tuck terror, venerated thus, thus for their dangerous fecundity, their terrible worth. Yet, were they not simply fulling, fulfilling their destinies, being protective, nurturing in their zeal? They came to be represented for their darker powers. Venerated in temples as goddesses to be appeased, associated with gods either as their spouses or as their forms of energies. I have a great problem with that. Female principles that have been ritualized, iconized, cherished, feared and filtered. And so I undertake a journey. A parikrama is it of self-realization. I empty myself to Maya, Maya captivating me, surprising me by my own responses to her different forms, manifestations and incarnations. The more I understand her, the more I want to realize her. Maya, the illusion and the creator of illusion. I look within the womb to discover that which is outside. I, I become the womb, armed with solace and caring. I am the earth, ancient, primeval, modern and all-encompassing. So the world, all nature, tells me. So, it shall tell you.
archetypes, symbols, chance, automatism, spontaneity, energy, gesture, materiality, knowledge, transcendence, wisdom, discretion, liberation, fading words, fading existence, existence of forms and the merging of forms and sounds, an essence crossing over from flight to light, to insight enter into insight into the realm of insight, into the realm of incarnation, death, birth, and the journey of soul in segments. We see a full stop. We always see a full stop at the beginning. Maybe it is a conversation. We start it and then we end. There we see a full stop always and we think that the sentence is never complete and existence is never complete without, without a full stop. Do we see a full stop? The energy does not stop flowing at that point. It recoups, reforms and moves on. Death is not an end. It is energy changing direction. Cursing on, thrusting again in a different form and space and also a different pace. Just like my painting, me cuddled in the lap of my Pitaji, that is my grandfather, mesmerized by stories, fantasizing, fantasizing them, narrating them even today. Whatever I heard in his lap is a part of my archetype, of that fading archetype which may emerge, I don't know when. Learning to draw that first dot, that first full stop and falling in love with the movement, that dot changed into a line, a line into a form, and that form gaining life, rhythm, dance and life. <sighs> How I drew on the walls, my clothes and myself experiencing the pulse of the movement. I was, I can say it now, I was, I was in love for the first time at what, two and a half years. And, and it has stayed with me. Birth and death are two sides of the same coin. Time is cyclical. There is no end. Is or not known or not to know. I am or not in the vastness of my heart chakra. There is. There is only curiosity. From the sublime we emerge to the gross we expand attachments, desires, thirst binds. I, I just can't move forward. The clinging is mutual and letting go is always a struggle. We are all tied by the same umbilical cord. The binding rope becomes an umbilical cord connecting all souls with the superconsciousness, the divine and the light. In the yoni, the soul and the body comes together again and again and again and again. Life after life, the play of life begins and it ends. But the cycle continues. It surprises us. It surprises us with choices. Two journeys always, always our feet carve a path of their own. Two moments, 
two lives passed away. Live these drenched, deep, dived in color, brimming with rhymes and songs. Nothing, nothing came out of the churning of oceans. In the desperate thirst, I saw the alchemy of nectar turning into poison. I saw myself changing. In the desire to be perfect, saw myself falling from the heights, collapsing into a square, bland whirlpool. Who says there is liberation here? Who says it is important to live? Who says it is important to live, rise after falling? Who says it is important to see yourself and others in you after falling? Only rising is important. After liberation, it is important to live. After watching yourself, just seeing yourself is important. The truth of white resides in black. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, the body returns to dust in the grave, but isn't grave also a womb? I have always seen a grave as a very, very secure, calm, peaceful space where all elements were, they just merge back. There's no resistance. There's no violence. It is quiet. It is silent. It is solace. But isn't grave also a womb? Energy flows back into the universe. The Hiranyagarbha the golden womb from which the first seed emerges, tracing the path of prana through the body. And the journey, it continues through fire to air, air to water, water to earth, and earth to life. The fire of the pyre is also in the female belly. As said in Brahad Aranyaka Upanishad, they pass into the smoke, from smoke into the night, from the night into the fortnight of the fanning moon. Reaching the moon, they become food. Their gods feed on them. When that ends, they pass into this very sky, from the sky into the wind from the wind into the rain, from the rain into the earth. Reaching the earth, they become food. They are again offered in the fire of a man and then take birth in the fire of a woman. If there are any questions, I'm ready, I'm here, you could ask me. I'm not a poetess, I am an artist, I don't follow a gharana, I don't belong to a school of thought. I walk my own path and I waver and I go wherever I want to, expressing in the medium that I want to. And I'm, I must say, I'm grateful that somewhere down the line, when you talk, 
when you talk of the womb, of sharing of womb, and of a space to which we all belong collectively, there are no barriers. I talk about love. There is a lot of violence just now around us. And there are boundaries. Everywhere there are boundaries. As an artist, my sole purpose is that of a koji, that of a of a person who is constantly trying to see, okay, what is here? What is here? Can I see this? Can I see this? This is me. Okay, this is me. This is also me. Everywhere, everywhere, when you find yourself throbbing, my heart is beating in yours. I see that in Lotus Ponds every time it takes me to another realm. It is the beauty. It is the beauty that I see. There have been so many questions that how come there is so much happening around you? There's so much violence. There's so much aggression everywhere. Why are you not seeing it? I'm bombed almost every day. I don't watch any news. I don't read any newspapers. I want to hear about love. I feel scared. Yes, I, I cannot deny that. That somewhere down the line, just as this tree takes over me, that news may take over me. I avoid that. So that is the reason I only talk about this. This is what I am. And as an artist, extremely transparent. So here, if there are any questions, I would like to, I would like to just be there to answer. I can't see anyone, so it's very difficult for me to understand without the voice. Of course there is, I cannot deny that. I cannot deny that at all. And the fact that there is violence on women, there is violence, it's, uh, I see it as we first raped the earth. The first violence, because I see the earth as a feminine form. I do not talk much about the female I talk about the feminine. It is a much greater gender. When we talk about the feminine, it is also about all the males who are garbed as a female or as a male. It is much more than this gender. First, we learned how to rape the earth. We forgot as a, I'm not a messenger, I'm not a, orator, but that's what I see it. When we mine the earth, when we take out whatever is there from the skies, or the rivers, or the animals, or the trees around us, we learn how to cross our limitations, our freedom as a human. We broke the cycle. We first broke the cycle being a human being. And we forgot where to stop. We kept on and on. We reached our homes. We rape our sisters. We rape our daughters. I don't know. I don't know where it is going to stop. Madam, uh, my name is Amjad. Yeah. Uh, it was a pleasure hearing you. And uh, as you brought out a point that we don't bring out news or read news, but as man being a social animal or a social being, uh, and your creation itself is a reflection of uh, a 
a society or a state of today? How can you get disconnected from it? No, I'm not disconnected. I'm just connected to another thing, another entity. Uh, everything is existing here. I'm not talking about a social order. Uh, I, the, the life is not existing in one dimension, according to me. Everyone is free to think at least that much uh, till yet. You know, uh, I if cho choose to have another dimension, a dimension which is of an existence. Violence was there always. I don't see that there was, there was a time without violence. But of course, the, there was this, um, the food chain, the cycle, which was there, which kept us all intact. We knew we could be also a part of that food chain. And I think the day we broke that, we broke all the norms of a civilized existence. So it's not that I say that uh, I cannot, I, I'm living in the social order. I'm not, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of this, I'm not uh, living out of the social order. But it is that what you choose, it is a matter of choice. And I choose to uh, see the beauty Somebody has to be there to talk about that, I guess, till yet. Uh, there are a few people left to talk about that, I, and I, I choose to be one of those. Anything else? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for coming all the way and presenting to us. It's, it's a pleasure and a big fortune to see you uh, and hear you and the other gentlemen who danced also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Point you so is, much. No, no, one, one second. The balanced part of the energies, the energy oh. balance we are talking about. Uh, you talked about the balance of energy is the core of everything that uh, uh, is existential and uh, sums up to that. So you're saying the energy balance is the sum and uh, core of everything. In your poetry, uh, we were able to see only the uh, feminine part of it. Because I am talking about the celebration of life, uh, that is totally a priority of the feminine form. Uh, because she has the womb, she has the power to procreate. You are looking at a physical aspect. I'm not uh, just now talking about the physical aspect. When we talk about the power of recreating and procreating and positively recycling the whole thing, now how does that recreate anything? Anything, whichever, it does not have to be a physical. Don't look at it only as a biological, physical aspect. When we talk about procreation, it can be psychological, philosophical, ideological, social, and of course, physical and biological also. So here I'm dealing with a subject of a complete rejuvenation and the formation and the running of this world, this empire, that I believe you are purely, you know, you have your own mind and you can go according to that. But I believe when we talk about rejuvenation, how can a thing be rejuvenated? It cannot be rejuvenated out in the air. It has to have a space, like there is a conversation between you and me. Now this is a conversation for, uh, which can be ideological, philosophical also. And a new idea is emerging in your mind and my mind. My answer may bring about something new in your, uh, your mind. Your question has brought about a new idea in my mind. How has that come? That has come about a space between us which is totally a philosophical space. That is also a womb. 
A womb is not only, I'm not here. It's very nice that you uh, questioned this because I'm not talking about a biological, physical womb only. I am talking about a much larger space which is engulfing so many other things. And uh, if you have time, I don't know, uh, I started with this uh, whole idea of Hiranyagar, which, uh, uh, which is a part of a mantra from Yajurved, which meant that Surya, is a form through which everything is constantly being procreated and rejuvenated. It is the first womb and that and the purest womb. That's why it is called golden, purest and the gold. It's, uh, there is an analogy between them. So I had always thought of Surya as a male form. For me, Surya was a male form. It never was anything to do with the feminine. And when I, ha I started to read this mantra again and again, and I came to know they're talking about a womb. And how come a man and a womb? There is some problem I'm not understanding. And in the end, it was and the explanation said that there, that there are two energies, again in Surya also which is the yin and the yang. The pure consciousness at every point is pure consciousness. The moment it realizes to recreate, to rejoice the celebration of life, it becomes a womb. And that, that celebration, we cannot take away from the feminine form. And that's the form I talk about. And I see that everywhere in the stream, water, everywhere, even in you. I'm sorry, I see only the feminine. We celebrate creatures. the feminine, that's why we are here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To close the evening's performance, I would like to propose the vote of thanks. This program would not have been possible without the support of the director, Srimati Satyabhama Badrinath, curator, Mr. Patro, deputy curator, Darshan Kumar, and assistant curator, Ms. Nivriti, and all the technical staff at NGMA Bengaluru, including Mr. Asif, Mr. Lingraj, and so many others. Thanks also to Saurav and Bharat for the videography. Thanks to Ms. Preeti Garg, Gallery Veda, for all, and all their staff for the coordination support. Thanks to Shailen Smith and the Raj Art Initiative, and Mr. Salim for bringing about the exquisitely woven art piece. Thanks to Mr. Lokesh Bharadwaj for bringing his movements to life into the performance. And as curator, curatorial collaborator, I, Lena Vincent, would like to thank the artist Seema Kohli for sharing her work and all of you in the audience for being with us today. Thank you again and have a pleasant evening. <laughs>